Pakistan expects to cut its gross domestic product growth projection for the financial year 2022-23 from 5% to 3% due to losses from the catastrophic monsoon rains and floods. According to Planning Minister Hassan Iqbal, while the 2010s super floods had affected around 20 million, the impact of the current flash floods had been felt by more than 33 million people across the country, of which over 0.6 million were housed in relief camps. His warning came as the NDMA reported that the death toll from the deadly floods had climbed to 1,396, while the total number of injured stood over 12,700. According to the NDMA's latest situation report, the cumulative number of homes damaged by flooding, either partially or fully, was over 1.7 million, while over 6,600 kilometers of roads and 269 bridges had been damaged. At least one-third of Pakistan is inundated, while the estimated overall damages amount to over $30 billion. Essen Iqbal says that Pakistan expected a 2% cut in the GDP growth figure due to a combination of crises, chief among which were the floods, the delayed approval of the IMF funds and the economic situation emerging in the wake of the Russia-Ukraine war. The weekly inflation dropped slightly and posted an increase of 42.7%, largely driven by essential kitchen items and high energy costs, according to data released by the Pakistan Bureau of Stats. The weekly inflation measured by the sensitive price indicator posted a slight decline of 0.58% on a week-on-week -week basis that ended on September 8. Before this, the highest year-on-year -year increase in the SPI was 45.5% recorded for the week ending on 1st September and 44.58% recorded for the week ending on August 25 and 42.31% in the week ending on 18th August. The latest data shows that the SPI dipped slightly on a week-on-week -week basis mainly because of a major drop in food prices, tomatoes and onions on account of imports from Afghanistan and Iran. The week ending on July 28 saw the highest week-on-week -week increase and in inflation at 3.68%, soaring vegetable prices due to damage to standing crops and a massive hike in electricity rates have also contributed to higher prices. The damage to standing crops will push up the prices of vegetables in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, the government has exempted duty and taxes on the import of tomatoes and onions. The duty and tax relief per kg will be nearly 10 rupees, while the impact on the tomatoes will be negligible. However, the import of these products will accelerate further in the coming days. The National Electric Power Regulatory Authority on Thursday notified a 4.12 rupees per unit reduction in fuel cost adjustment for key electric consumers for power consumed in July. According to the notification, the FCA for KE would be lowered by 4.12 rupees per unit in July against KE's petition for 3.48 rupees due to a fall in global fuel prices over the preceding month. This will reduce KE's revenue collection by 7.4 billion rupees in September. The price of power purchased from the Central Power Purchasing Agency in July dropped by 31% when compared to June, while the price of RLNG decreased by 16%. In the same period, furnace oil prices increased by 4%. The NEPRA said the reduction in FCA would be applicable to all the consumer categories except lifeline consumers, domestic consumers, consuming up to 300 units, agriculture consumers and electric vehicle charging stations. It said the negative adjustment on account of monthly FCA is also applicable to the domestic consumers having time-of-use meters irrespective of their consumption level. The US dollar on Thursday again appreciated by 2 rupees against the local currency to close at 225.42 rupees in the interbank market. The dollar strengthened by 4 rupees in two sessions. The sharp increase in the greenback prices, despite the arrival of the $1.1 billion from the IMF, has threatened the government's aim to calm down a vulnerable exchange rate. However, the resumption of IMF loans did provide contemporary respite as the rupee recovered first and then started losing against the greenback. The State Bank of Pakistan said that during the week ending September 2nd, it received $1.166 billion from the IMF.